Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I am Bound Chasu, and welcome to First Turn's Guide for the Broken Lords. Before we begin, I would like to thank you very much for all the positive feedback and consecutive criticism you have given me after the first pilot episode for this mini series. It looks like it is exactly what you are looking for, which makes me very happy and very encouraged to make more of those videos. Now, as you've seen, it takes quite a while between each episode of this. That's because I do need to make sure I am absolutely certain about my build orders. I need to practice a lot to make those videos, so that's why they do come out every now and again instead of every second day. I hope you understand. And with that in mind, let us begin. Now, one little change I'm making... Crank a louder. One little change I'm making, aside from fixing this thing, which bags out every time I launch a game, to the format is that I'll actually start with what says on normal. That's because after more and more tests, I have discovered that if you go for anything on less than on normal, then your f faction's preset, uh, what you might call it, starting region, tends to get botched up a little bit. You start in regions that you shouldn't start in just because they were not generated at all. This is quite. This almost always happens in tiny uh, worlds and oh, actually some of this happens in small ones as well which is why I decided to just go ahead and generate maps on a normal of a normal size it will take slightly longer but it shouldn't be that much of a difference now we are covering Bokolots next even though I have made a guide for them not very long ago although it has been a while it was before any DLCs but not only has the balance changed quite considerably the build orders for the Brocolots are also very tricky and unique. That's because they are maybe the only faction? I don't want to call them that. But they are one of the very few factions, at the very least, that are given a considerable degree of choice on the very first turn. In fact, on the very first turn, you are given four very viable build orders to choose from, and all of those four will lead you into a completely different direction. Okay, two of them are very similar, actually, but still... Let's say that there are, there are three different uh, directions that you can go for when you use those build orders as a broker lot. So with that in mind, let us begin. Manufacturer Scouted Galadriel styles are not ideal for broker lots. We already have access to cavalry unit and extra damage is not the best thing for us, but it's not the worst. Much rather, I would be much happier if we got ourselves access to like Seratan or Iris Ones or Dredgers, but I suppose we'll see how things go. So this is our world generation this time. It's a cold region. Now, Brocolots get cold region stats quite oftenly, uh, quite frequently, I mean, because they have access to Dead Field. Dead Field, that's a lot of dust from them, so map generator thinks that this is what we lack. Obviously, we prefer to get deserts, but we'll get to that. First things first, first, uh, first though, let's zoom out. Now, why is zooming out so important early on? That's because you can tell how close you are to... Uh, the game's North or South Pole, because maybe, just maybe, you start right on the edge, that means that you have less areas to scout. We are quite far away, so we can scout North, and in fact, that's kind of preferable, because it, this will allow us to discover possibly some very well-defended regions, or determine if there is an enemy in there or not. Very quickly, we'll close the area out, and yeah, it's not generally a decent idea, but first of all, expansion. Where do I want to settle my first city? When it comes to Fitzy output, my first city should have a decent amount of industry and dust. Science is less important for studying city as the broken lords. Now, ideally, you want to have around 9-8 industry or more. 7, I'm kind of on the fence always. I have had time choosing my build order because your build order depends on your studying industry. There's my standard build order and my emergency build order for when you have little industry. And there is also another thing you need to take into consideration, that's the dust output. You want to have 15 or more, generally speaking. If you have both, if you have less of either dust or industry than what I just said, then you need to go for emergency build order. It looks like the region we have is good for that, but before I do anything, there's another thing to cover. There is a river here. Now, the rivers are extremely important for broker lords because you can get a technology very, very early on called Acapulistics, which does increase the dust yield of river tiles by two, which is actually a pretty hefty increase. And also, later on in the game, you can also gain the uh, technology that gives you increased... Uh, hold on a second. Where on earth is it? I kind of lost track of it. Extra dust from rivers. There we go. Not dust, but science from rivers, which is also a pretty hefty increase. 
So I do personally like it a lot. And also additionally, the Broccolots Hero, they do have access to Aquatic Dust, which gives you even more dust on reverse. However, don't you dare use your Sana Hero as a governor. Why? Because it's he's not a very good governor. He's got dust efficient skill, which uh, gives him percentage bonus to dust uh, generation, as well as increases efficiency of walking on dust with your population. Not ideal. He's far better as an army general, especially since he's got army defense boost, which is extremely useful for Broccolot's army, which does rely a lot on defense. And you can also gain quick access to distributed defenses, which is an enormous boost. It's also much better, by the way, to go for distributed defenses than to go for Gallop of Battle, because the defense bonus is actually less. And additionally, this is this technology. Not technology ability you can get faster so i do prefer this one to the other one also it requires you to get indiana bones which is nice because loot is very important for you when you play as the broken lord so with that in mind where do you want to settle in this region there is a river but i don't have the technology to use that river just yet so i can expand it with the borrow streets i don't, don't necessarily need to panic about selling on a river on your first turn Alright, this area does have a decent amount of industry and it has happiness, but it only has 8 dust. 8 dust is... Uh, it's not the worst thing ever, but it is on the... I'm not too happy about this region. Whereas if I settle here, it's just flat out worse, but it does allow me to settle on my first stand. What about the steel stacks that I see over there? Well, they give me a decent amount of uh, dust and science and they give me happiness, which means that I effectively have 7 industry which is the on the fence area and if i go to the hidden springs that's uh, not very good overall this is good because it gives me a lot of dust it does give me some science and some industry i'm still probably gonna go for emergency build order from this location but it does allow me to later in the game expand towards the river although it's gonna take a long time so it would be essentially wasting a river a little bit i could also go for this start which this does give me a lot of industry but not a lot of dust, in fact, it's too little dust for me to accept. This is a bit better. A bit. And because I have... If I had to sit on this tile, which I kind of like, I only need to move slightly to over there. So from over there, one, two, three, I could still make it. So let's try to see more. Alright, this tile is one science, three dust. So settling over here, that's actually not a very high amount of dust and industry at all. It does mean that we're next to a river. So... This is where you need to make this decision. Do you want your city to be good in the future? If so, then selling here is not a bad idea because you gain a very nice increment in dust later on because of those rivers. But your first city is very important in my eyes and you do need to expand quickly. So I personally would rather go for this one. Now, when you play as a broker, there are basically two ways you can play as and four build orders to choose from. You can play the broker lords as either an expansionist or as a Russian warmonger. Broccolots are very good at the both of those things. In this instance, I have not seen any empire settling in a region next to mine. And I would have seen them because I can sort of-ish see the borders of my region on all sides. And I see that nobody has taken any of those. Obviously, since we just have one AI in here. But later on, I'll show you what happens if somebody does settle next to you. Since those events actually do happen quite... Maybe not very frequently, but it does happen sometimes that you spawn right next to the enemy empire, regardless of your world generation. So, in this instance, we're gonna play as the expansionists. And because of our little static industry, I'm going to go for what I call an emergency build order. Which means that, yes, we do start by purchasing a population in our city. And then I go into science, our science menu, and I see how long it takes to get ourselves language square. It takes two turns, that's nice. It's a small amount, which means that I can rush Language Square and then go for Mill Foundry and then go for Public Library. Now, actually, Public Library is not necessarily always what you need to go for uh, as your fair technology. Sometimes it's better to go for a couple of sticks. In very rare instances, you might consider a sewer system instead as well. Generally speaking, however, Public Library is better, but I don't know that yet. I don't know how to generate it, so. Those are the things I'm definitely gonna go for. Why do I go for Language Square before Mill Foundry? It's because in two turns I wouldn't be able to uh, have time to make Mill Foundry anyway. Actually, hold your horses. I do have enough industry to make Father's Memorial in two turns. And I want to have Mill Foundry in two turns. So let's get Mill Foundry in two turns. 
and thus I will be able to go for it. This is my emergency build order. It involves making Father's Memorial into Mill Foundry, into then a uh, redesigned settler. As always, I do redesign my settlers like this. Bam. And there we go. Between the settler and Father's Memorial, I will put the Mill Foundry as soon as it's researched. Thankfully, <coughs> sorry, I have enough signs that put the girl for him quite early. <coughs> my apologies. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, there is. My apologies for that break. Anyway, our first faction quest is installed. First of all, let's check out where it is. Now, a lot of lost players make a mistake of not fulfilling this faction quest. It's a bad idea, in my opinion. You should try to do it very quickly. Yes, the first steps can be a bit bothersome, take some time for you to actually go through, especially this one. But later on, the quest does give you some pretty nice rewards. I mean, archaeologist, maybe not the best technology that you can have, but. Other things are nice boost. The hero that you get is also very nice. The trinket that you can give to Broccolot's governors, that's also very nice. So yeah. Let's have a quick look. See, I can explore those ruins, give my hero a bit more experience in the process, and keep exploring. It looks like we had a pretty decent area to settle, but generally speaking, I wouldn't have been able to make it in just one turn. I would have had to delay my settlement. And you can only delay your settlement if doing so gives you more than double the income that you can get by not delaying your settlement. So I'm happy that I did what I did. Now, I actually make a some, made a somewhat different play than what I usually like to go for. Usually as a broker lots, I like to have all my Star Wars together. That's because you do need to make sure you take as little damage as possible with your army because it costs you to heal them. And you take less damage when you fight if you have all of your units together, obviously. However, I do have a lot of dust income from because of my southern region. In fact, I have a ton of dust income. And I can potentially allow my unit to buy health from my units. And additionally, it, I can also su uh, sufficiently support my army's uh, dust expenditure, despite the fact that I have to pay extra for having an extra army. Usually, I like to keep them together for the second reason of the fact that it costs less to have them together. But in this instance, because of how much dust I have, I'm okay with it being different. Alrighty then. Let's make the female foundry, shall we? And it's gonna take us three turns, but if I buy the population, it's just gonna take us two turns, which is quite nice indeed. After that, a settler, who is gonna take about four turns. Now, keep in mind, this is a manager's build order. It's not what you should always go for. Only when you have little industry and or little dust. And also keep a look at this. Make a seller right now it will take me four turns. If I make Mill Foundry first, it will also take me four turns to make it a seller because of the industry increase that I get from Mill Foundry. So alrighty then, let's go ahead and keep exploring. Now I am on the lookout for new areas to settle as well as new manufacturers that are interesting. Let's have a quick look. What is this? Those temple ruins are on a slow field. So it looks like this world generation we have is warm on around the poles and the cold in uh, around the equator. Sometimes you get generations like that and I'm not sure, maybe it's just a cold map in general because this is also fairly cold territory, so let's keep looking. This manufacturer is Jodos. Jodos, they are a range unit and you do need a range unit as a broker lord, but I don't personally like Jodos uh, as my broker lord's faction. Ooh, I can make a sector, this is amazing. In case you haven't figured it out yet. But uh, Hornets are also not bad, but as a broker lord, I would much rather have either the Dredges because of the dust increase. Suratan as a very unit, nice unit complement and extra bonus to defense. Suratan are actually my go to minor faction as a broker lord. Or Islands ones because as an expansionist, I will need a lot of happiness and they also can heal your units on the battlefield, so they are also very, very good. Alright, then what do we have? More Jodas? And even more Jodas! Holy balls! Well, considering how many Jodas villagers we get, it could be a, not the worst idea ever to assimilate Jotos purely because of how many you would get and how much vision you could get. But still, those are not exactly ideal. And fittings in, I haven't still found a perfect area for settlement. Keep in mind, the rivers are very important when looking out to settle because of the dust increase you can get. Uh, but let's keep looking. Let's have a, let's make sure that I'm not too far away from our regions. Because I'm probably gonna try to move my settler to one of those regions over here, since it's close by to my city, and I can probably maybe settle just one turn after deploying, so that would be nice. Ooh, that's the best anomaly in the game, Golden Tree. Hello, dear sir. It gives an enormous fitzy boost to everything and plus 20 happiness. It's absolutely amazing. Shame that it's in the middle of a cold forest. Cold forest is pretty bad for Brook a lot, so. 
It might not actually be the best location for the setup, but it's also fairly close to the Botanical Garden, which does give you a decent amount of both science and, uh, uh, and happiness, so... I think it's more like a tease and adaptation for you to overcome. Anyway, Duragashi. Duragashi are decent, because they do give you the extra luxury resource. But then again, like I said, I am on the lookout for the other minor factions as well. Empowerment should be queued up, and also you might be a little bit surprised that I am not rushing Empowerment like I used to in my Broccolot's Guides. That's because from, of the buff that Founder Memorial has received, which does allow it to have extra dust, as well as overall balance changes. In my opinion, now it's much better to rush Founder Memorial than uh, Empowerment. And in fact, numerous testing has confirmed that rushing Empowerment is just a detriment to your overall economy and your prospects for the future. Alrighty then, let's explore some more rooms. I'll show you some more map generations quickly, but I do want to get to uh, around to level 10, 10 before I show you more uh, of map, because I do want to briefly cover settlement perhaps. Galadrius, wow, there are also a lot of Galadrius. So, alright, usually I would say that you need to go for, like I said, Seratan, Islands ones, or how are they called? Delvers, Dredgers, you know, the Dwarf guys. But because it looks like we have a lot of the same faction nearby, you could instead try to assimilate both the Galadriels and the Geotus purely because of how many of them you get. That will decrease the cost of making those units in your empire significantly, as well as increase your stats significantly. I mean, inversion is not that important, although it is useful in multiplayer. And damage is not that important for Broccolots either, but when you have a lot of Galadriels villages, well then that's a different story entirely. Alrighty then, selling just two tens, that's nice. Now you could make the argument that by waiting, I could have saved up some dust on buying out this population point, but it's much better to get this seller faster, and uh, we're broke a lot, so we can spend some dust, it's fine. Alrighty then, let's keep exploring some ruins on the horizon, that's very nice. Hopefully, they will, be, they will have something nice in them, they didn't, and my hero still has not leveled up. If he did, I would have given him Indiana Bones, which would have been very nice for discovering this ruin, but sadly, that was not the fate of this hero. Alrighty then. Soon enough, I will be able to merge my two armies together. Alternatively, I can start trying to go to this region and see what there is. And I will do just that, because even if I reach just to this town, I should have extra vision around this area. And maybe this will allow me to actually see what I want to do with this. So let's start piling, because it's also very important. Colonize the region of Justy for 15 titanium, that's absolutely amazing. Later on, they will require to get some extra influence for them, which for the Brokolos is an amazing quest, because you just buy the population, put it into influence, and BAM, you're set. In 5 turns, you have them assimilated, and it's a very good thing in general. Alrighty then, Yudise, he is gonna visit the ruins, and then I'm gonna move him back to probably talk to the Doragashi, or maybe to the Galadrius. Probably to the, the Galadrius, because I don't think I'm gonna settle in this region just yet. It's uh, not the worst region ever, but it seems a bit cold and a bit... It only has dust and science. I mean, dust and science are both fine and dandy. Especially for your not first city. You are less required to have industry for your second city. But still, it's not necessarily ideal. Alright, 5 tens. Can I make it in 5 tens over there? It does give you a nice artifact if you get there. So yes, I'll try to make my way over there, because the artifact... There's a chance it can be something equipped by an army general. That is... Uh, uh, that, mm, like the one that you have, a Broken Lord one, which is a very, very nice boost, especially since I will get both Titanium and Glass Steel to equip artifacts because of uh, this quest I got over here. Alrighty then, On, in the north it's even colder, so it looks like the entire world is cold, or alternatively, it's only the Nova Hemisphere, so this half is cold and the bottom half is warm, and that seems to be the case, so ideally I would probably want to expand south to get access to the deserts as quickly as possible, but it looks like the deserts are really far, far away since even that area is cold, so... I think in this instance you just need to not bother yourself with the deserts and try to make do with Tundra. Tundra is not bad for the Broccolots, honestly. So anyway, let's go ahead and explore those ruins real quick, hopefully no army will spawn. I think it's too early for armies to spawn, because... Uh, I convinced, I put it some time ago, I mean a long time ago, that ruins that spawn armies are too threatening to players on very first turns. And I think because of that, you can only spawn armies in the ruins now, starting from turn. I'm not sure which turn, turn exactly, but you do have some time. Anyway, let's parley. Don't put any influence in military uh, ministry, put population into the economy, population ministry. Now, I wouldn't put anybody in the military ministry, anyway. 
Economy, population, ministry. Eh. Well, considering the fact that I'm gonna settle soon, that's unlikely since I will not have the influence for that. So anyway, there is that. Now, where do I want to expand with my settler now? Since I do have a settler that can be out and I can send him somewhere. Let's have a quick look. See, this region does have a river, so it will give me a decent amount of dust later on. And it already seems like to be giving me a decent amount of dust. And in general, Tundra rocks are very nice because they give you all fits you can get. And they give you four in total, which is very nice for standard tile. So this seems like a decent area, somewhere around-ish here. Alternatively, I could... This region is pretty bad because it's very... Narrow and I would need to walk all the way over here-ish to settle and the Fitzy output seems to be pretty poor This region, I mean it does have the golden tree, but it feels like a trap because there's very little dust around it Of course, I could try to have a coastal-ish city, but that only gives me access to three river towns Which isn't bad, but it's not amazing either So settling around this area would not be the worst, but it wouldn't be all that amazing As for other regions, I haven't discovered much. I, there is titanium deposit in here and it's a pretty decent fitzy output, all things considered. That's a lot of, of science and dust, not a lot of industry, but there is enough industry to go by. And there is titanium, which is kind of useful. And that's ice sculptures. So there are some uh, areas for me to settle. I would probably go for somewhere around here-ish. Maybe even settle on this particular exact tent. But we have seen enough of this map generation. I think it's about time. Yeah, I would, mix. I would wait one tent for who we're expanding. But we've seen enough of this. Let's go ahead and show you some other map generations. Alright, this time we got a desert, that's very nice, and it allows me to potentially showcase you my other build order. But before we get to that, let's do a standard thing and zoom out. Looks like it's we're on the Northern Hemisphere again, with the hottest region being around here where we are, this is the equator. Good to know, this means that there's probably not much to scout around here, and if I want to look for new regions, I need to go north. That's good to know. <clears throat> Alrighty then, first things first. Let's build the Star Wars, let's have a quick look, see are ah, those ruins, unfortunately there's a forest in the way, but still we can have a look at the ruins, and look at this, what we uncovered, that was a three anomalies right next to each other. What did they give us? They gave us an enormous amount of dust, but actually not all that much of anything else. So there is that problem over there. Let's have a, let's go ahead and split my Star Wars again, I kind of want to use my hero to explore those ruins, but it's more important to scout well. So, I can actually wait for one entire tent to discard those ruins. That is also an, a possibility. And let's have a quick look see. With my cellar, I could not make any one tent into this area, and it's not that amazing either way. Alternatively, I can go ahead and settle over here ish, where I get 8 industry and 16 dust. This allows me to demonstrate my other build order, and in the future, I could expand my city from over here all the way to this area, which will in the future give me amazing yields. Now, when it comes to raw fits output, that's that's the 26 compared to that which is obviously, as you can see, far far more. I mean that's 35 plus than happiness, so that's around 38ish, let's say. It's uh, so this is much better in terms of raw fits output. That's true, but this area allows me to demonstrate my other my other. Hold on a second, my other build order. Although if this tile is good enough. The one that is undiscovered, if this one tile has some industry, then it could potentially allow me to show you the other build order. Nah, yeah, I think it's just too dust, because it looks exactly the same as this tile over here. So, okay, if this was a real game, I would probably sit over here, because the dust, uh, because the overall fitzy is just purely amazing. But let's, for a second, assume that this tile doesn't exist, alright? Normally it would settle here. It's too good to pass out on, alright? It's a really good yield. But let's assume it doesn't exist. Let's assume that this is what we have. This is the best what we have, but it is above the emergency build or the threshold. It has a minimum of 8 industry and 16 dust. So, briefly, pretend you don't see this area. Let's settle here. Because I do want to show you what I have to show you. So, first things first. I can actually use my hero to discover those ruins. Nice and easy. Bam, 5 glass steel. And then... I can reassign him to, let's say... Uh, I could, I should have not explored those ruins yet, because I could have reassigned my hero here. Well, that's a mistake I made. It happens. But, let's have a, a look at my other build order, which is my standard build order as the Brocolodes, as long as my requirements are met. And this is... and it goes as follows. First of all, bad population. Secondly, 
Read the Zanius, Settler, and yes, you know where this is going. Settler first, baby! Mm. I like this one. It does allow you to go for this alert at a fairly fast pace. And uh, let's have a quick look see. Because I will focus on Settler first anyway, I might as well go for the Language Square first and then go for Moon Foundry, since I will not have time for anything other than Settler. I'll have the Settler on 10 5, potentially. Because I'll be able to buy out extra population, which will speed the production of the cellar. Now, this may seem like it's a horrible idea and that my FTSE outcome will plummet in my empire, but I've tested this numerous times. And as long as you are above the threshold I gave you, and this is on the very edge of the threshold, this is the worst case scenario of an appropriate amount of industry and dust, then overall, your FTSE output will actually go ahead and be better than if you were to go for the previous build order that I showed you. It will allow you to have a very powerful empire very, very quickly. Now, this region seems like it's a very bad region for settling. Red so ugh, disgusting. There is Elf Spine and there is a massive tree nearby, but it's still overall very low Fitzy output, so we don't like this area. Let's look somewhere else for where we can settle. Actually, there's some hot prairie nearby, so maybe it's a bit better. But let's keep exploring this town, however. It has deserts, it has water tree, which at the very least gives it happiness. Step so, I mean, if you have to, I guess it's extra industry, I suppose, but it's just a normal town with extra happiness added to it. And, oh boy, yeah, this looks like a nice spot. That's a lot of extra happiness added to us. That's extra 20 happiness, which is marvelous. This amount of everything, not a lot of science. We, it looks like we will not make a science empire with this stat. Obviously, it would have been much better if I settled there, but this spot doesn't exist. Remember, there was no such stat in this area. We got a worse stat than you might think, alright? Let's just pretend, because I want to show you the build order. Alrighty then, let's keep exploring to what we can see. And there's... I mean, if we started around this area, it would be actually pretty bad. That's a low of its output. It does have very, very bad, that's about it. It looks like we are surrounded by a lot of food regions, which is not ideal, but this one... Is a very nice region, so I'm happy. It has Alice once, yes! Oh, this is a godlike region. Overall, our start, start is amazing, I have to say. So, yeah, I'll definitely go ahead and try to settle here as quickly as possible. I'll try to assimilate the Alice once as quickly as possible as well. Now, it looks like, unfortunately, because of how low my science output is, I could have gone for Mill Foundry first because as soon as I'm done with the seller, I should probably go for the Mill Foundry, but. Going for Lego Square first does allow me to at the very least try to parley as quickly as possible with the minor factions. And it's very important when you go for this uber fast expand tactic. You do want to have them pacified ASAP and you do want to get those quests to colonize region X because you will be doing a lot of that with this build order. Because your second city will be very quickly capable of producing a new settler and your styling city will also be very quickly capable of producing a new settler. In general, it's settler extravaganza and just it's just purely awesome there is not much else to add to that really your fits the output will be absolutely amazing let's have a quick look and expose some more rooms. and actually in all actuality i don't need to show you more of this stat once the settler is done also obviously i want to buy out the population and it looks like in this instance yeah we're actually uh we're actually below normally i could i can get the seller out on 10 to 5. it looks like i'm Remember the number correctly eight industry is not actually quite enough, but let's assume we had enough industry You you can get a seller on 10. I'm certain that with nine industry you can get the seller Because I swear I'm actually kind of certain I got it with eight industry But maybe I had happiness that I didn't notice it's actually possible Actually, let me check because I do not all of my stats that I had and Yeah, it was nine industry not eight industry my mistake my apologies. You, I should not have settled here or at the very least, I could have settled here, assuming this area didn't exist. But I should not have gone with this build order unless I had 9 industry. 9 industry is the threshold, not 8. My mistake, my apologies, but at the very least, I got it correct on the video. So anyway, after the seller is done, obviously, I want to go for Founders Memorial. This will also boost my science output. Then go for Mill Founder as quickly as possible and empowerment, depending on what I go get first. In my next city, I want to get population as quickly as possible. And I already explained to you what I get. Uh, Mill Foundry in both cities, Empowerment in both cities, then Settlers in both cities, and expand again, and again, and again. And with this build order, it's usually quite important to go for sewer system as quickly as possible as well. But it works well. 
It really does. In this instance, I botched it because I remembered the number wrongly, but still, at least you got to see the start uh, that I just grabbed. It's a very good build order in my opinion. Let's move on! Alright, next lamp generation, and I have tweaked it a little bit in the world map generator just to be able to show you my third build order. As you can see, we have a full complete, a full set of AIs just because I wanted to, for this to happen. Do you see that? That's a color of board of another player. And as a broker lord, this gives you the ability to, instead of going for an expansionist, you can be a warmonger. A rushing warmonger to be more exact. So, how do you do that? First of all, you have a quick look around your uh, region, obviously, as usual. And uh, there are there is a mineral ridge nearby. It gives you a lot of industry. And this is also desert, so you also have a lot of dust. It's a very, very good start. In fact, it would be a great start regardless if you were to go for a warmonger or an expansionist. But in our case, it's absolutely perfect. I do want to scout a little bit. Maybe holy balls. I didn't even think I clicked there, but whatever. I don't want to scout a little bit because it is very possible that there is a better stat somewhere to be had. And also, zoom out. I almost forgot. But it looks like I'm in the middle of the map, so that's not ideal, but that's good to know. So there are some more anomalies, but still, it doesn't look like anything that's that I would be too keen on. Yes, let's... No! That was close. I did not want to move, but I did. Thankfully, it didn't matter. Let's explore those ruins. And then I will not explore those ruins because I want my hero to do so. Now, I do need to find out what kind of AI this is as quickly as possible, but it doesn't necessarily... Actually, it does matter. It really, really does matter. I'll cover that in a second, but firstly, let's move my Scylla. Ideally, I actually should have moved both of my Scyllas closer to see what kind of enemy this is, because it does change your build order. That's why there's a difference between the two rushing build orders that I personally use. Oh, alright. It does look like this is the best spot to settle. I mean, over here-ish, I wouldn't make it right now, anyway. And this is just a really nice fit nice output. So, let's assign my hero real quick. Explore those ruins. Produce industry for the industry in your cities for 10 tens. Well, that can be actually easier, uh, easier than it might look like. More, uh, you know what I'm trying to say. So, as a wo Russian warmonger, what do you do? Well, there are two different scaling. Uh, I'm not scaling, but build orders. And it really depends on who you're facing. If you have discovered that you are going to uh, face either a Nick of Age hero or a cultist hero, maybe, and that's a big maybe. Actually, no, let's just leave it at that. I don't want to mess you with your heads. If, it, if you know for a fact that there are Neck of Ages or Cultists in this region, then the build order is uh, actually a very simple variation of what you've seen before. Let's have a quick look. How quickly can I get a Milfoundry? Two tens, that's amazing. So, Founders Memorial first. Uh, go ahead and go population uh, for population first, regardless of anything. As soon as Final Memorial, Memorials, then go for Mill Foundry, then Empowerment, and then start spamming those Star Wars. You may want to redesign them potentially with extra movement so that they can get to enemy capital faster. And also, it does help them a lot on the battlefield to move around. Although, against Deck of Ages, it really doesn't matter. It does matter against Cultists, though. Not by much, but it does matter. So, it's uh, up to your personal preference. If you're far away from the enemy city, it might be a good idea. Actually, in our case, I know for a fact that there are forests between my city and the enemy city, so it's probably indeed a good idea to give my units extra speed. Although it would delay the production of them by quite a lot. And we are not that far away probably, so let's keep with the standard default setup. So this will be probably our build order for until we take over the enemy city. And it's actually very effective against those two factions that I mentioned already. Now. This is only if you know for a fact that the enemy is one of those two factions. What if it's another faction that the enemy has? Well then, your build order changes completely. Go away, go away, go away, go away. And we can actually patch us on the population ASAP, it doesn't matter. We can instead go for this tactic, where you do go for a solar fest, and you go for the standard uh, tactic where you go for... Not standard, the one I showed you last time, where you go for first settler first, as soon as possible, as soon as he's done, in this case, it will definitely be 5 tens because of our amazing start. As soon as he is done, you go for Founder Memorial into Mill Foundry, and in this instance, there is actually no reason not to go for Language Square first, if I were to go for this build order. So you go for that, and with the settler, you settle somewhere else, which is also productive and fairly close to the enemy border, so maybe around here. Maybe around here, but it would have to be around this area. Depends on what the scouts would reveal. 
And then uh, as soon as you have two of your cities set up and both of them have mill foundry, then you go for that. Of course, you also need to have empowerment in them. That's also an important bit. Uh, the difference between the two build orders is as follows. With the build order that assumes that you're fighting against the necrophages or the cultists, you can get uh, your star, not star wars, yes, yeah, star wars, uh, much quicker. Around uh, you get the first one around turn seven, and then next one on every ten, which allows you to build a custom amount of uh, military. No human player, almost no human player. We expect that, and very little players will be actually able to do anything with this. Necrophages or cultists, as threatening as they are in mid and late game, in early game they are very easy prey for you, and that's ideal. Now, however, if it's another player, or if you're far away or whatever, then the other build order is better, because while it does take you slightly longer to make this military, but then you can double the amount of military you make per turn, and it's still gonna be early enough for the enemy to not necessarily be expecting this. Now, uh, let me quit and s uh, just to show you another stat I'm gonna go ahead and generate it while I talk. Now, what if you go for the Russian build order and you discover that you are right next to, let's say, uh, other mages, forgotten, or another broken lords? Well, in this instance, there's a plus side and a minus side to the fact that you decided to rush the enemy. The plus side is as follows other mages, broken lords, and forgotten. Forgotten less so than the other two, but they can still do that. Are factors that are very good at rushing. So if you go for a rush or build order against another rush build order, then perhaps you're not gonna get killed. That's the plus side. Now the downside is that you're probably it's gonna be very inefficient and that it's gonna probably not gonna pay off and you're not gonna capture the enemy city if you try to continue rush build order against the two. Uh, against the other factions that I just mentioned. Other majors are just flat out better at rushing than you are. Other majors are the best rushers in the entire game. If you try to rush against them, you die. And as simple as that, no question about it. Now, I guess other broken lots, whoever gets to see the enemy city first wins. It's really that simple. I guess the Forgotten. Forgotten rarely do rush, but they can rush. If they get the Predators early, they will tear you to shreds. So that's why those three factions are risky and that's why Russian build order is risky in general unless you get your scanning information on the first turn. Alrighty then, this video is very long because of the amount of build orders I had to show you so let's have a quick look at our last uh, world generation. This looks awful. <laughs> I mean that's a lot of science and a lot of dust, a ton of dust in fact, but no anomalies whatsoever. Ah there is one right over there and nothing else that I can see. We seem to be in the south, not quite around the, it looks like equator is over there. Maybe it's the cold equator actually, but still I want to see what's on the south. So let's go ahead and send my Star Wars there ASAP. And hey look! Seems like it's the sea. So we seem to be in a very safe spot at the very least when settling this city. There is some anomaly that I have discovered over there. Probably want to settle another Star Wars to see what is around the, this area. And I probably won't settle right over this area because might as well settle somewhere closer to some industry. If you settle an, on an area that has zero industry, well, that's just GG. You do need some industry, even as Brokolots. And yeah, we're on a peninsula. Very easy position to defend. I like it. It does mean that we're not gonna be rushing anybody. I mean, especially now since nobody spawned anywhere and we have no industry for this. But either way, let's have a quick look. Based on what we see, if I were to settle right away, I could settle somewhere around here-ish and go for the emergency build order. Which, uh, I mean, it would work, it would work okay-ish, but there's seriously uh, not a lot of fitzy that we can get anywhere, really. Unless there is some really nice uh, anomaly over there. Also, there's the guys over there I almost forgot about. And looking at everything in general, it looks like this is the best area. It has a decent amount of everything. It does mean that we cannot go for the fastest expansion strategy, because it only has 8 industry instead of 9. But we can go for over there. Actually, stop! Ah, not settle. Don't settle yet. Don't settle yet. Alrighty then. Now settle. Because maybe we would have unveiled something more, but we didn't. So let's go ahead and move my hero. Explode those ruins. Then teleport my hero again. To over here. And explore those ruins. That's extra experience that you get for a hero. Very important, as you might imagine, of course. And again, emergency build order. So then I go mill founders memorial into empowerment. As for the research, it looks like we have a lot of it, so we can probably go for 
Milfandre fast since I've finished Rados Momoyo in two tens and I want to go for Milfandre ASAP after that to fix uh, to fix my industry income. And like so, and I will still get language score fairly early on. What is asset faction? Ursus. Ursus. Uh, I'm not a big fan of as broken lords. They're not the worst. They're not the best. They're okay. I much prefer other factions. And I think really I've covered as much as I could. There are of course other stats that I could potentially explore. Maybe there is something that you wanted to see, but in that case you have to ask me in the comments. And again. As I said last time, I think I'm gonna end it here, because it is a very long video. Uh, feedback is greatly appreciated. In this instance, this video was uh, very long actually, 40 minutes, over 40 minutes. That's partially because I had a lot of build orders to cover as the Broken Lords, because of how unique they are and the way that they can be played. All of those build orders are tested in both multiplayer and against endless AIs. And they all can work against endless AIs. Yes, that includes the rush build order or that... that you shouldn't bother yourself with, I guess, endless AI unless you're very experienced because it, that is very difficult to win a game with this. You will kill somebody with it. It's difficult to win the game with this, though. Alrighty then. Still, as last time, please, all feedback is greatly appreciated. I think main feedback will be that the video is too long. I should try to cut it down somewhat. Maybe I showed you too much of the very first start. Maybe you don't need to see as many turns forward. I'm not sure, please, again, leave me your feedback, tell me maybe what faction you want to see next, because I'm kind of open in that regard, and I don't really particularly mind which faction I cover next, it doesn't matter to me that much. Except for the Coldest, Coldests I will need much more training with, because I'm not, I don't like the playstyle, so either way I will need some extra training. So not Coldest, but any other faction you want to see next, please let me know. And yeah, I suppose that's it, I really have no more extra comments. Broccolots, I don't personally like the playstyle, even though I'm a Okay, broke a lot by my in my own right. I just it it requires you to count a lot, and that is I like playing endless legend chilled with my back stretched out and whatnot. Broke a lot forced me to do the math all the time, which is in my opinion less exciting experience, but they can be exciting for some people, and they're really really good at rushing. Trust me. Anyway, that's all for me. Please do leave your feedback down below. It was Punch, also known as the Mighty Mix Spammer. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you online.